It's a strange one. Andre won't mind me telling you this. When I was at the other West London club, um, it, he had a start to a season and he, he wasn't scoring goals and we had Scott Hogan coming in. And we bought Scott and Scott's obviously a class act in terms of finishing. And Scott would have probably stepped in for Andre. He'd had a bit of a barren time and he couldn't score goals. And, um, it, you know, he probably would have stepped in. Scott had an injury. Um, Andre Gray then could not stop scoring, you know, from that one. And he got championship player of the month and he team of the year and everything else. And he kicked on from there, gets his Premier League move. And it's one of those moments. And, and Andre's a player that needs to get that rhythm right. Uh, and he can be very frustrated with himself by, you know, he'll miss a simple chance and hit a 20-yard scream in the top corner. Um, but he's a player that certainly needs to get his, you know, his, his fitness levels. He's a powerful athlete. And if you get that right, Ian, he should be one, undoubtedly one of the most dangerous strikers in the division. He has got pace. He's got power. He's got an eye for goal. He's got a proven track record. So I'm delighted for him that he's starting to score a couple of goals. And I'm looking forward to seeing him play, hopefully, tomorrow night. We've got Charlie Austin as well, who may well join him. Two strikers could hurt them, um, I hope. We'll have to wait and see. But certainly, it's nice to see Andre playing like that, lead the line on Sunday and enjoy his football. Have you seen a difference in, in him in training? Just sort of, yeah. He, he, we had, to be honest, I think he's probably suffered from the fact that we haven't had a week of training due to the, the madness of the schedule. But we had a really good week last week leading into the Luton game, and he worked very hard, as all the boys did. Uh, he trained very well. His data was very high, um, and he and he trained with a smile on his face, which is important. You got to enjoy going to work and enjoy being a good player and enjoy being better, or getting better. So we had a really good week last week, and I, and I think he benefited from that against Luton. And I hope very much him and Charlie and the boys can take that into the game on, on Wednesday night. Guys, he's getting there. You know, he's getting there. But at the moment, it's been niggling. You know, if he's if he's not right, obviously, it's the international break coming up. But but right now, he's still, you know, it's not uh, healed in the manner we hoped it would do. So um, at the moment, he'll be unavailable. With, I mean, obviously, to Scotland, they've got big fixtures coming up. I'm, I'm guessing if he's not fit to play for you, then he surely can't be fit enough to play for Scotland. No, no, absolutely right. You know, we'll see how he is. He's gym based at the moment. Obviously, we missed Lyndon in terms of the form he was in and, and you know, the player that he is. Um, but he's gym based at the moment. He'll go to sports science if he ease back into training sessions slowly, so, as you rightly say. And we, we always want our players to, to go and enjoy the international football and come back better players for the experience. But he's not ready. If he's not fit for us, he can't be fit for Scotland for sure. So um, it's just unfortunate. It's one of those niggling injuries that has, has, has carried on far longer than we had uh, certainly hoped for.